Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's continue on with our discussion of gram-negative organisms. And we will now move on to Brucella. Brucella is a gram-negative aerobic coxobacillus. The way that you acquire brucella is through ingestion of contaminated animal products. So specifically, we think of unpasteurized milk when we're talking about brucella. It actually survives in the macrophages, so when it gets into that reticuloendothelial system inside the macrophages, it's able to survive from that environment, which can then go on and allow it to form these non-caseating granulomas. Uh, what you're seeing here is a large granuloma that is showing granuloma and necrosis here. Uh, this is specifically from a liver cell. You can see some of the fatty deposits in the liver there. Typically, this will present with an undulant fever, night sweats, and arthralgias. So as you can see here, uh, we have the association for undulant fever and unpasteurized milk. Uh, you can remember those two things uh, associated with brucella. Now, what is an undulant fever? An undulant fever is where we see fevers that will rise and fall and rise and fall. So it kind of goes up and down. That's very characteristic of brucella. To treat this, uh, we're going to use doxycycline as well as rifampin or streptomycin uh, that are interchangeable here. Uh, a way that the United States system works here to try and decrease the risk of brucella infections uh, outside of pasteurizing the milk, which kills off these bacteria. The cattle are tested every year uh, for brucellosis, and oftentimes if they are positive, then they are euthanized uh, so that they don't spread it to the rest of the herd. Next we'll discuss Legionella pneumophilia. Legionella pneumophilia is a gram-negative rod. Uh, as you can see in this picture here, this is a transmission electron microscopy of the uh, Legionella bacteria. We don't have really great pictures here because uh, the big thing with Legionella is that it really does stain poorly um, with our gram stains. So oftentimes we'll use a silver stain to help us uh, visualize this particular bacteria. It does grow well on charcoal yeast extract um, uh, that also has iron and cysteine in it. One of the ways that we can determine if a patient does have a infection with Legionella is by testing their urine. Uh, and in the urine, they will have an antigen for the Legionella pneumophilia bacteria uh, that is present when they do have that infection. What do the labs show with Legionella? Well, oftentimes they can show hyponatremia, so our sodium levels will be low. How do we get this bacteria? We get this from aerosol transmission. So most of the time this comes from a water source uh, that has been stagnant, uh, not moving for a long time. Legionella can grow inside of it, and then when it does move somehow, it can become aerosolized and uh, become infectious if someone breathes it in. One of the most common places that we do hear about these type of transmissions is from uh, some hotel rooms. Say maybe the hotel room has been uh, empty for an extended period of time. Uh, one of the there was a big concern uh, this past year uh, in 2020 during the COVID shutdowns that a lot of these ho hotels were not occupied and so they didn't have the air conditioning system moving. So some water in that air conditioning system was able to, to develop Legionella. And then when they came back in and people came back into those rooms that they could potentially spread some Legionella. Uh, there's not been a whole lot of seen as far as a great rise there, but that was a big concern. So air conditioning systems that haven't been used in a while uh, are a concern of potential transmission of Legionella pneumophilia. It does not transmit person to person. Uh, so if somebody, if your roommate has Legionella's disease uh, or Legionnaire's disease, then that doesn't mean that you're going to get it. It doesn't transmit person to person. It's only through that aerosol from that original source. How do we treat it? We're going to use a macrolide or a quinolone. Uh, and one thing that I also use here, uh, just kind of a tip to help you think about the various associations. Legionnaire, so obviously our Legionella's or Legionnaire's disease. A Legionnaire is also a French term for a soldier. Uh, and they usually have silver helmets, so silver stain. And then it's 
Oftentimes you'll see them sitting around a campfire. So they have charcoal in the campfire. That's one of the uh, charcoal yeast extracts, how we uh, can detect it. And that charcoal yeast extract has iron and cysteine uh, because he is no sissy. So uh, if you do well with some mnemonics and that kind of thing, this will be helpful. So Legionella pneumophilia can cause two different kind of diseases. Uh, the first one being the one we've already talked about, Legionnaire's disease. Uh, Legionnaire's disease gives us a severe pneumonia, uh, oftentimes unilateral and lobular, um, but it can develop uh, potentially into to a very deep-seated pneumonia, as you can see uh, in this particular patient. They've got it uh, mostly in the lower lobes on the right, but then almost all throughout the left side of the lungs there. Uh, not only does it cause that severe pneumonia, it can lead to fever, uh, GI, and central nervous system symptoms, all associated with Legionnaire's disease. Uh, the most common type play people that you see that have this disease are going to be your smokers and those with a chronic lung disease that have already got some lung issues so that it's a lot easier for it to set in as an infection. The second type of disease that this can cause is Pontiac fever. Pontiac fever is... Uh, really mild, uh, just kind of feel like you have flu. Uh, it's really self-limiting. Most people will get over it pretty quickly. Uh, but then you can also use that treatment that we talked about earlier of macrolides or quinolones uh, to help rid it there. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.